Welcome to Enoch Baptist Church, a church where love grows. Are you looking for a church home where you can worship and praise God in a celebratory environment? If so, then Enoch Baptist Church is the place for you. We believe in equipping all saints so that they can live their lives in a happy, healthy, and self-fulfilled environment. We believe this is the only way that we can truly give God the glory and celebrate how wonderful it is to be a child of the living God. The church, before I begin, would like to do another appreciation tribute to you. And it is our way of saying thank you. Man. Hey, Dad. It's happy birthday, man. Before we get a it's strong, man, that we forget. Thanks. And it's not a hurt thing that we forget. Uh, look, really? Y'all don't know who it is. I'm talking about the next reference to Boston and Black community around here. Happy birthday, Dr. Daniels. 
Enjoy your day, and many thanks for all you do for the community. Happy birthday, Pastor Daniels. Truly, you are the best pastor that I have ever experienced. God has blessed you and kept you, and he keeps, he keeps blessing you over and over again. Happy birthday again, and may you have many. Daniels, Good Samaritan wishes you a happy birthday and a very happy 30th anniversary. Good afternoon, Dr. Daniels and Enoch Church family. Dr. Daniels, I, I just want to wish you a happy birthday and uh, and congratulate you on 30 years of permitted service uh, at Enoch Baptist Church as the pastor. And I pray that God would continue to bless you and that heaven would continue to smile upon you. Thank you for everything you've done for myself, for this Enoch community. Life is all my opportunity. The opportunity that you presented to me, I can never humbly thank you enough. Two things that I can take from you, I can continue to grow in life, but it's the leadership that I learned in a community based mindset. I definitely see how this church has grown throughout the years, and how this community has uplifted. A lot of it has to do with the vision that you had. So continue to lead us, lead our community. I hope you enjoy your birthday and your vacation. God, we know that he understands, and that's what we want to come forth, God. My, my only request, God, is that they do not see, hear, or understand me. I want them to see, hear, and understand you. Amen. God, I want them to just, just hear your word. Let it touch their hearts. Let it come to them, that they might understand what it means to understand you. No, we don't want to understand everything about you, because if we understand everything about you, we get lax of days, and we start turning our back on you. But we learn just enough to get one step closer to you, God. If I could get one step closer, I know I'm one step away from that which I used to be. Amen. And God, we say thank you. Yes, I just need to pray. Amen. Amen. As you take your seats, because he understands. In dealing with the times of, of, of today, we're dealing with technology, we're dealing with all kinds of social media, and we're dealing with the age of, of the generation before me that kept saying the microwave started it was like I want it now. Because uh, back in the day, you know, you had to work for everything, and you, you want to grow something or buy something at the store, you had to go to the garden and grow it and then bring it here. But now they've gotten to where you can actually grow eggs, uh, get eggs, and get chickens, you can do all kinds of things. Uh, in a shorter time than we used to do in before. And so, and so over the years of dealing with 
trying to understand when I joined church and learned who a pastor was, one of the things that hasn't changed across the years is that word, pastor. Across the last 30, 40 years, it just hasn't changed. Why hasn't it changed? Because it's always needed. Why hasn't it changed? Because it's always necessary. The word pastor. Because that means that he's in charge of the church. And if you're in charge of the church, that means you have something that you're, someone that you're leading, which means someone you're responsible for. And for all the years of, of, of dealing with uh, celebrating and serving pastors, I, I've often asked myself, I'm one of those inquisitive why, why, why boys. When, when I was young, my mom used to say, I, I would walk in and say, why did the refrigerator work like it did? And she would give me a little bit of what she knew, and I said, why? And after a while, she said, because I said so, that's why. <laughs> and, 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 so, and so my dad, he has a master's degree in mathematics, he would ask me questions, and I would go to him, and he'd be outside dealing with stuff, and I'd say, Dad, why, 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 what makes a car run? So he would go through all the details about how a car runs and what it does and the engine again, and I would just put a why. He said, because I paid for it, that's why. That's why, that's why. And so, and so I asked that, that same question about pastors and ministers because when I got called, I couldn't understand why. Why me? Why now? Why here? And God said, why not? I'm like, I can't get that answer. And, and so I asked the question about why because I wanted to understand when I see pastors who've been preaching longer than two years. When I see a pastor in a church, it doesn't matter if he's been through five, six, ten, it doesn't matter. He's been pastoring all this time. My question is why? Why do you do what you do? Why do you get up every morning and go to the church? Why do you turn over to your wife and say, I got to go to work? And why does she turn around and say, well, have a good day? And she starts praying for you immediately because she understands what's getting ready to happen to you on that day, the challenges. Why? 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 Why do you get to the church and you have office hours and folks try to break them? Why? Why? Why do you have, have choirs in the church trying to sing and you know they have singing issues? Why? 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 And you, then you tolerate people who come through and say they're praying for you. They're not praying for you. They're praying against you. Why? 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 Pastor, why? 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 And so... And so, and so I tried to run from this word because he gave me this word a few weeks ago and I said, no, no we're good. We're good. Let's, let's go to Timothy. Let's go to the New Testament where it talks. He said, God said, no, 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 no. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. You keep asking me why, I'm going to tell you why. And so he came through with, with, through me with the title of Simply I Understand. And the verse in Mark chapter 5, it deals with a man who deals with the fact that he has a daughter. His daughter's 12 years old, and it's simple. She's sick. And so the story about this man, his name is Jairus. And the man Jairus' story is after the story of Jesus and the disciples on the sea and the peace be still story. This is after the story of the man of Gadarenes, what they call the legions, and one, one typical version of it talks about the fact he was, he said, what's your name? He said, my name is Legion for William Minnie. And so it, it, it's, it, this is after all of that. And so it becomes significant because he's on the other side. He comes back, and the crowd is waiting for him. And that's not a problem. But Jairus, you see, Jairus is a leader of a synagogue, which means he's Jewish. And, and, and if anyone who knows Jewish, Jewish people, that, that Jewish people believe that Jewish people will go to heaven. Jesus said, everybody going. If they believe. Amen. Well, yeah. we got a problem. We got a problem. Verse 22. We got a problem. Jairus comes to Jesus. Falls at his feet. See, Matthew says he worships him. And so he comes and, and gets to on his, on his knees and comes to Jesus' feet and says, I need you to come with me to my house because my sister, my, my daughter is, 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 is dying. She, she's, she's sick. She's she about to die. And, and I need you to come go with me. Now, 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 anyone who has a daughter, I don't have one, but anyone who has a daughter, you know that's baby girl. You know, that's, that's, that's my heart. And if you're a daddy, you know, you're a sucker for the daughter, you know. Son walk up, get a job. Your daughter walks up and says, what you need? You know, you just start passing stuff out. Why? Because that's baby girl. And so he only has one child, this is the daughter, and she's sick. And so anyone who has had an opportunity, and I say opportunity because it is a reason I say opportunity and not tragedy. It's an opportunity to have a child to get sick. Amen. You know what it feels when the doctor says, we'll get to you in a minute. 
You know what it feels when we can't get to the hospital fast enough. You know what it means. And so, and, and I say opportunity because it's at that point that what do you do? You call the pastor. Or you call the church. Or you call your deacon. At that point, you're relying on God to help you because you've taken the other sources out of the picture. And that's why I say opportunity, because at this opportunity, it's an opportunity if you have a conversation with God. Wait, you weren't having that conversation when the child got sick, so you're going to have a conversation when the child gets sick, and therefore it draws you, what, closer to God. Because at some point, he's going to come back and talk to you. And so J. Iris goes to Jesus and gets to his feet. Wait, he's breaking protocol. So, so part number one is very simple. You've got to know your place, and you've got to know what exactly happens. That if I'm coming to Jesus' feet, what does that mean? That means I understand that his feet and me worshiping and bowing to him and succumbing to what he is and who he is is more important than my daughter who's sick. Wait, wait. Why do you say that? Because I didn't go to him and say, Jesus, my daughter's sick. Come help me. Oh, by the way, oh, holy is thou. No. He comes to Jesus first in a worship mode and says, I'm going to worship him first. Tell him my need second. But well, why is that important? Well, 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 there's, there's a verse in the Bible that says, uh, 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 Our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be as it is in heaven. And then we get into what we want. What are we doing first? First we talk about him as we're talking to him. Isn't that how we do our parents? Mama, boy, you girl, 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 you, girl, you, you look wonderful today. And husbands and, 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 and boyfriends, how, how do we do? Girl, ooh, girl. That outfit you got on, ooh. Mm. But what's her response? What's mama's response usually? What you want? What you want? Because you're coming here for something. You come here for something, but 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 it still it still brings about the point of the fact that first I want to understand I know who you are. I want to understand your place in my life. I want to understand and make sure that I understand where you exist and where you fit in what I need. Yes, I have a need, but you're but but but, but you are more important than me. And so Jay Iris goes and says, "I worship your feet," and then he says, "Hey, I need to come to the house." And so Jesus begins to follow him. The crowd that was at the shoreline when they met Jesus, they are with them. Pause. Commercial break. It's like a football game. Right at the point, change is getting ready to come. Commercial. What? Commercial break. What should be a commercial break? Well, there's a woman with the issue of blood. And so I learned about her before I learned about Jay Iris because they kept talking about her. And I said, why do you keep talking about her? And then when I found out about him, then God said, it's not that she is separate from the story. Mm -hmm. She is the story. That's it. And why do I say that? Because Jane Iris had to learn a lesson from her. And he didn't even know who she was. The woman with the issue of blood, real quick recap. The woman with the issue of blood had an issue of blood for 12 years. She had decided that she had spent everything that she had to go get healing and then that happened. She's decided that everything that she had, she was now broke because she was, she was still hemorrhaging and having some issues. Now it's going on for 12 years. She heard that Jesus was in town. And so Jesus is in town. Perhaps I can get my healing from him because she thought within herself that if I could just go touch to him, because God, I ain't got to say nothing to him. We ain't got to have no conversation. I ain't got to make no appointments. All I got to do is I can just get to what he's wearing and, and get near him, then I'll get the healing that I need. And it happened. And so when she did that, the virtue of Jesus came from him, and he said, uh, virtue left me. Wait. He had people with him called disciples. And these disciples said, but Jesus, wait a minute now. All this folk pressing on you. And you gonna ask us, who touched you? Everybody touching you. He said, no, 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 no. The virtue has left me, and I know what I'm talking about. Who touched me? And she, who was having the issue of the blood, it healed, and she realized that she's about to come out, get called out. So she came on out and said, okay, it was me. It was me. It was me. And so she told him what was happening. She confessed to him what was happening. He said, daughter, that's important. Daughter! Don't, don't, don't worry. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. He said, daughter, your faith has made you whole. Well, 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 that's, 
That's, that's interesting. But why is, why is that important? That goes to point number two. That God's ways are not our ways because you've got to remember now. Jay Iris has a daughter who's sick unto death. And we just did a commercial break. Wait a minute. How are you going to do a commercial break and I got issues? In the middle of my story, in the middle of my walk, with Jesus, I got Jesus with me, and and, and you got married to come and touch. I ain't got no problem with you. Get your healing, do what you gotta do. I ain't got no problem with that. My problem is he stopped. Amen. He could have done that all the way and kept walking. Mm -hmm. But look in the Bible, and you'll find that not only was there nothing said up until this point, Jesus never talked to Jay Iris until after this story. He didn't tell Jairus, I'm going to the house with you. Jairus made the request, Jesus simply followed. Which means Jesus is behind Jairus going to the house. But just because I'm behind you doesn't mean I'm following you. Perhaps I'm leading you somewhere. Yeah. Why is that important? Because if one issue of blood had an issue of blood and it got taken care of, that means that Jairus, her faith made her whole, Well, her faith took care of him too. Why? Because he got a chance to witness what Jesus can do with just the presence. If I can just, I didn't, oh, see, Jairus said, can you come lay a hand? The one issue of blood said, but if I just touch the him. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means that he ain't got to do a hand. All you got to do is get into the presence of God. And something will change about what you are dealing with. She came to him in worship because she went on her knees, but she was, they said she was trying to hide. I don't know that she was. I know she didn't want to be seen because she still had the issue of blood at the time. I get that. But I don't know if she was also on her knees because he was on his knees when he met Jesus. When you come into the presence of God, the first thing you ought to learn how to do is worship. Say thank you. You ain't got to find something to make a list. Thank you for being you. Yeah. Yeah. Women, you got the best thing you can hear from that man? Baby, I thank you for being you. Woo. Yeah. I used to send cards home to my mom. And, and, and I've been gone for, I don't know, 20 plus years. And so I would send her a card. And I said, everybody in the car would just say thank you. And, and she called me and said, something wrong? I said, no. I just want to thank you for being you. You took care of me. And I appreciate you. When he and I first met, I used to send him, you can find, you know, folks send emails to him all the time. And I get that. And I, I would send him an email every now and then. The email would just simply say, either thank you for the word you gave me today. Because my sons heard the word. And we had a conversation on the way home about the word you preached. How many folks could talk to this 17 year old and not have to turn a back hand and not finger and not fist and not reach in the back seat for him? I got those. I, I, I have the I, I opportunity to talk to my sons and we now have to swing. Amen. And so I appreciate what he does because they're in the back sometimes we sleep. But it doesn't change the fact that the word got poured in. Amen. That's important. And so it's an understanding. So God's ways are not our ways. Well, well, well what's, what's that significant is because not only is it the fact that we're dealing with the fact that she had her issue and got healed and he said nothing. Jay Iris said nothing the whole time. He didn't complain. He didn't whine because the Bible's good about, about letting you know they were thinking. You remember the man who was lowered through the roof by, by the friends who were, who were helping him get to Jesus? It was too crowded. He couldn't get in. Lord, you know the Sadducees and Pharisees who were in the room watching and witnessing all this stuff were thinking bad things. And what did Jesus say? The Bible says he heard their thoughts. And since you want to have these thoughts, let me fix your thoughts. I ain't got to fix your words, I'm going to fix your thoughts. And when I'm going to fix your thoughts, this is what's going to happen. Okay, fine. You forgive it? No, just take a bit of a walk. Yes, sir. Right and so Jairus did not have, at that moment, the Bible doesn't record any thoughts he had that were evil towards the woman. So, back to the main program. So now we're on our way to my house. But before I could get there, before we can get turned, somebody from my house is coming to me. Oh, I'm thinking we got an update. Um, I don't know how to tell you this, but your daughter's gone. She's passed away. I had no problem with the report because God said, but look at the question. Why are you bothering the master? What? 
Why are you traveling the master? Well, first of all, you know I got a lot of first of alls. But first of all, he said master, which means he knew this person from the house knows who Jesus is. He recognizes Jesus. But he didn't understand. You see, I could recognize Frank. But if I hadn't seen him in the store with a uniform, I wouldn't know he was an employee of a picking store. I don't know. You won't come to me and tell me my daughter's gone. I get that. I can cry out, moan, do whatever I got to do. But then when you ask me, wait a minute, you work for me. You are serving in my house. I'm the leader of the synagogue. Don't you know I have authority and power and you come to me and asking me questions. I have no problem with you asking me a question, but be careful how you step. And now we do our children, be careful how you ask that question because now, now you, you have done something. You have stir some stuff up now. And so when he said, why do you trouble the master? That's when I began to understand, okay, Jesus speaks. At that point, Jesus is talking. He says, be not afraid. Mm -hmm. Only believe. Yeah. Huh? Be not afraid. Only believe. Jairus' spirit had to have been dropped for a second because the woman with the issue of blood stopped his progress. The woman with the issue of blood had taken time from Jesus to be able to talk and have a conversation with her. Therefore, his spirit had to have dropped because he felt he was a priority because he's a leader. You know how we do. I'm a leader. Don't you know who I am? That's the other thing I like about this man because he doesn't care who he is in terms of his title. I've seen him out there with the fish. I've seen him out there passing out clothes. I've seen him out there giving folk stuff. I've seen him out there trying to drive a truck. I'm seeing like that trying to make it But I've seen him out there during our community today. Anything that you can't do, he does. He doesn't ask or look around. He wants someone to come to him and say, hey, what you need me to do? But if you never come, that's okay. I got this. He's moving chairs and moving tables. It's not because he's pastor, it's because he's man of God. There's a difference. There's a difference. And so what happens, and, and we get to point number three at the end, what happens at this, at this point is he asks us, he says, but just this, this believe. And so they get to the house, and you know, they have the mourners who, who are now mourning and crying because they're paid to do so at the house. And Jesus says, why y'all mourning? Why y'all crying? What's going on? She ain't dead. Amen. I got this. Yes. They start laughing. He says to Martin Lawrence, that guy. get to step in. Right. <laughs> y'all got to go. Yeah. Why? Because Jesus likes to be surrounded by folk who believe. Yeah. And if you don't believe, you got to go. And so he takes Peter, James, and John, and, and puts everybody else out there, goes mom and dad, and they go onto the door. He grabs her by the hand and says, daughter, get up. May you get up. He speaks in Arabic and one of the other books of the Bible. But the point of the matter is he gets to her and she comes back alive. He says, she ain't dead. She just look. I got this. Yeah. Yeah. Jairus is a man who's in charge of the church. But Jairus knew his place. So he says, I know what I need. And what I need is coming up the shoreline. I got to bow down and talk to him and get this thing going. The way that I do this properly is first I respect the man for who he is and what he does. Amen. And then when I finish doing that, I'll make my request. If he chooses to come, it's on him. Well, he chose to come. While on the journey, he has to stop and pause and take care of somebody else, which is a very plausible moment, moment because we first have to also have to understand that when God is trying to do something for us, we have to understand he can do things for other people while he's doing stuff for us. That's important. God, God is not just a powerful person. God, I need you just for the day. I just need you. Don't, don't help nobody else. No. That's not how God operates. While he's going to do something for somebody else, he stops and pauses and takes care of everything he has to take care of on the way. That's very important. Why is that important? Because of point number three. God's timing is not our timing. Amen. You see, you see, you, you, you understand how to know your place. And then you understand that God's ways are not our ways, Isaiah 55. And then you go into Psalms 90, which talks about God's time is not our time. Because the door was alive when the woman with the issue of blood showed up. The daughter dies while he's dealing with the daughter. But Jesus encourages Jairus and says, be not afraid, only believe. I got this. 
which tells me that he had an issue of, he had, he had an understanding of what he believed before the woman showed up. Then after the woman showed up and after he was told that she died, he was given a new, a new place of encouragement. I understand. Okay, what you're telling me is don't give up. Amen. Don't give up on God. That's very important. Amen. Amen. The understanding is that it begins with worship. And what you have to understand in my closing is very simple. To be a pastor, you've got to understand your place in God. With this man, I can celebrate his place of understanding, place of trust, because I know when he brings a word, it's going to be real. If it ain't real, he ain't bringing it. Man. What happens when you ask him a, a question and, and you, you stop him for a second? You're like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Boom! There you go. And he, and he gives it to you. Why? Because he has enough in him about the word to know to bring it to you the truth. A place of focus, a place of vision, a place of patience, and a place of his calling. A few years ago, I, I joined the church, I believe it was 2007, 2008, okay. um, and he got on me because I went to him and told him that I was, felt I was called to ministry, and, and he said, okay. I've been coming to the church for several months. You know he does that, you know, you've been here two or three times, you might as well come on down because you've been here, you might as well. Well, I was with that guy. So I came down and, and I went to talk to him. He said, why, why didn't you come to me before me? I said, because I wasn't a member. He said, son, let me explain something to you. The call of ministry is not about membership in this church. The call to ministry is an understanding that God called you. It ain't my job to decide whether or not God called you. It is my job to give a platform for you to have it proven to you that you were called by God. Amen. And so he knew I had a few skills. And, and so and so he, he put me to work. He installed a few speakers here, uh, sound system, uh, here and there, upstairs in the, in the classroom. <laughs> and, 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 and another issue, and, and, and this, is, this is very key to his pastorship, to show you vision and show you how things work. Over here, there's a piece of concrete next to the lake. Before there were cars, there was a basketball hoop. And the basketball hoop was up because when he decided that God told him to put the church here, we had gangs on both sides of the church. The gangs were not friendly. Hello. And so, so, so they were here and they were having issues. And so when they had issues and he wanted them to have a place to do their conversation without a gun and a knife, he opened the doors of this church. So we had a basketball court on the, on the premises because it was like, don't bring the weapons, just bring your skills. Just bring your skills. And that was very important. Why? Because when he put it up, somebody tore it down. So he called, I got a call and they said, hey, you know, speaker work, can you put them back? I said, sure. <laughs> Brought my tools, we put it back up. Within less than a week, came down again. So I said, okay, 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 I got this, I got this, I got this. So David Watson and I got these ideas. You gonna tear it down because of what it came with. We went and got bigger screws, bigger bolts, <laughs> right. and stronger basketball hoop. Put it back up again. Tore it down again. So, me thinking height, you tear it down because it's too low. Ten and a half is too low. That's regulation. Mm -hmm. Ten and a half is nothing for your neighborhood kids. Yeah. Why do I know this? I know it for a fact because there were two basketball goals. I'm working on goal number two. Goal number one is up, it's 11 feet high. This man who's like six, seven, six, nine, seven, eleven. I don't know, 12 so how, how tall he was. So All I knew was he was walking yeah. through the neighborhood. And he walked past the parking lot, walked past the basketball goal, looked up at it, went and saw the basketball on the ground, went back and jumped off the ground under the basket, 11 feet up, and dunked the basketball. Wow. Now, now, <laughs> now, now, mind you, I'm on a ladder over here looking over here. And I'm looking, he ain't gonna dunk that basketball. Not only did he dunk it, when he finished, he just kept right on walking. Like, 
Why is that important? It's important because he kept putting it up and they kept tearing it down. He kept putting it up, they kept tearing it down. At some point, he reached a point where he said, I ain't putting it anymore. We ain't gonna do it. Why is that important? It's important because you reach a tolerance point, even when God gives you vision of the obstacles that come against you. But then God says, be not afraid. I got this. If you look to the opposite side of the building, you'll find not only a basketball court, you find a football court. You'll find not only a basketball court, you find a building. Why? Because in vision, they kept tearing it down. At some point, I stopped building it over there. And the vision that I had over here started over here. This is no longer basketball court, it's now parking lot. This is no longer somebody's yard, it's a multi-purpose building. Vision. It becomes an under, you have to get an understanding who God is and what God is and what God does and what God is about in order to be able to be. You can't be a good pastor. Notice I said good. Pastor is a title. I can go online and become a pastor. I can go online and become a bishop. I can go online and become an archbishop. If I got enough money, I can be anything I want in title only. But good is an attribute. You got to earn that one. And you can't tell me this man. And I'm not saying it because he's sitting here. I'm just saying he wasn't sitting here. If he was back there, turn his back. That'd be fine. Wait a minute. Now I'm behind his back. I'm talking behind his back. He's still just as good to me as he was when I was in his face. Why? Because he's a good man. Jay, I look at that person. And so, as we open the doors of the church, I want you to have an understanding. That the understanding came with, verse, with, with point number one. Know your place in God. And when you know your place in God, you'll come to him where? In worship. Yeah, my child is sick. Yeah, they diagnosed me with. Yeah, I'm now taking pills I wasn't taking yesterday. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm dealing with a bunch of bills and no money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But with your yeah, you need to put a butt guard on that. I got my issue with butt guard. We may have our problems, wife. We may have our problems, husband, but because if God can't fix it, it ain't to be fixed. And we got to give it to Him. And so, as we open the doors of the church, I want us to have an understanding that if there's one here who has not learned who God is and how God is in this story with Jesus, that you yourself might want to know who Jesus is. Because Jesus asked for you, He told us to go out. And Matthew says, Go out and tell the world about me. Don't bring them to a church. Bring them to me. And that's what Jesus wants. He doesn't want you to come to the man. He wants you to come to the man who serves the man. And the man that he serves is God. And so I ask, is there one? Is there one here today? You want to know, what can I do to be a strong individual? Well, if you don't have Christ, Christ will make you strong from just by his presence. You just got to get there. Maybe, maybe, maybe you're someone who, who, who knew Christ, 